Moving on towards the next, the first set of panel discussion, we are going to have a discussion on metro rail infrastructure managers and metro rail operators perspective. We're going to have a deep discussion on strategies for asset management key initiative, investment prioritization, digital asset management key technologies deployed, key challenges and future plans. I would like to first welcome the moderator, Dr. Vikram Venkateshwaran, Director, Deloitte India. Our first panelist, Mr. Pankaj Jain, Senior Technical Sales Manager, AI Application, IBM India Private Limited. Mr. Krishnanand Rengasamy, Vice President, Bhavan Cybertech. Mr. Anil Kumar Agarwal, former Director, Indian Railway. Sri Lalit Chandra Trivedi, Rail Division, India, Institute of Mechanical Engineers, London. Mr. Parveen Sharma, CEO, the BIM Engineers. So I hope all the panelists and the moderator is ready to begin the session. Thank you. Thank you uh, for the introduction and for the warm welcome. I think it's very fascinating that, uh, you know, in a, about 15 years ago, we would never have a panel discussion of this sort looking at digital asset management for smart metro rail. Because at that time, DMRC had just started with its numerous challenges. Uh, and Konkan Rail was probably our uh, the highlight of how India could run a very successful uh, you know, railway project. And Calcutta was the only city with a metro. Uh, and today, I was listening to Ajay's presentation. I did not realize that Agra is also having a metro program because I come from Bangalore. And the standing joke in Bangalore is when will Bangalore metro be totally up and running? Uh, and there are pillars everywhere. And those of you following the news, uh, Bangaloreans have a sense of humor about traffic. And our traffic is, part of it is not due to metro construction. Because what happens is when metro construction starts, the pillars start, the traffic starts. And people start buying property in that area, which leads to further confusion in the trap. Right. So in the last two years, I think the stress levels in Bangalore have been low because we are working from home. But come March, you will have all the metro jokes back on the top of Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. But having said that, I think uh, India has come a long way. And if you look at the budget and you look at the strategy from the government itself, the essence is on Gati, which is both, you know, movement of uh, passengers. Uh, citizens as well as freight. And in that context, I think asset management becomes a very important discussion because the operational efficiency of your project, uh, along with making sure it is operationally viable to run it, you know, what we call as an operational revenue, operational profit, depends a lot on recognizing the right asset, identifying the right asset, having the integrated people process management. So with this, I'll be very, very happy to have this high powered panel and I don't have to, you know, really think through it myself. I can put the questions to the panelists and get a lot of answers, not only for our audience, but also for myself. Um, so I'm, I'm going to, I have sent out the questions and I'm going to start with uh, Sri Lalit Chandra Trivedi to begin with. Uh, ki, what are the key areas we need to think from a strategy point of view? See, one is we can keep reacting. We can look at Ajay's list and we can say, wow, so many metro programs. But the minute I see so many metro programs, so many metro programs have to be managed. So what is it that we can do from now on to ensure that we are not digging the well then, you know, later and we are ahead of the game? Thank you so much. Uh, I, I hope I am audible. Yes, loud and clear. Yeah. Actually, I am fortunate that I was associated with supplying metro rails for the first metro of Indian Railways, India. Kolkata Metro. And uh, we have been gone through the learning process from the ramshackle metros of that time, which used to have absolutely primitive technology, but at least it was the beginning of the metro in the country. And as late as 2018-2019, we manufactured the state of the art rakes. Uh, we supplied about uh, 12 odd rakes to Kolkata Metro. And it was really the learning process. And as you have seen, the learning process in the railway technology is now <laughs> very difficult to cope up with. And uh, the and, and you see, I have been associated with the railways for last 40 years. But 
earlier the locomotive used to be locomotive the train used to be train and the locomotive fellow will not bother in fact in railways there used to be different departments for maintaining locomotives for the rakes for the station and they will not talk to each other and we never felt the need to talk to each other other than social uh, because we were part of the same uh, organization but uh, now every asset which you manufacture has a soul in it i mean uh, digitalized digitalization of each and every asset whether it is a fixed asset or a uh, uh, moving asset rolling stock uh, it has got a digitalization built into it so if uh, 20 years back 25 years back if i bought a logo i was sure that it will last for 35 years uh, because uh, it was running today i want my metro rake or any train to have remote control system so it needs to interact with the uh, inside of the network of built in the rolling stock so there is a it which is for your servers for your database for your other peripheral uh, infrastructure type and there is ot ot is the on board technology which works a train which works the passenger display system the train control system train braking system just now we heard mr uh, the Uh, Ajay from the wash, and he was talking about the uh, security from various point of view. But you can think of a train today. It is possible for a terrorist sitting in any part of the world. If he gets access to the train, he can just immobilize the brakes, and the driver will not be able to control the train. So that sort of uh, ramification of uh, this, while it has made the life of all of us uh, uh, easier, and we can now. Uh, do many things in a minute of time for which we used to be planning for years ages earlier but at the same time uh, particularly from the rolling stock point of view the earlier rolling stock was not accessible by the outside uh, environment today because of we want online diagnostic we want to give we want to guide guide the motorman the driver of the metro while he is working a train and for that the interface develops so your ot system the network system which was ethernet based or cable connections of inside that gets exposed to an external environment and becomes susceptible to the uh, threats this we want that this uh, artificial intelligence machine learning iot all these assets are now connected and so when you say asset management has radically changed from the way it used to be few years back in fact uh, now there is a separate iso code iso 55000 for asset management and this iso 55000 for asset management is not a uh, prescriptive it is descriptive similarly for the uh, uh, for the cyber security that whether your system is uh, Uh, your assets are cyber uh, secured or not there is a iso 2732 uh, which which has to be complied with to get a guarantee that your uh, system is uh, cyber proof cyber attack proof over a period of time and then you see uh, managing a system like railways it is a system of systems so you, there are external systems there are internal systems there are sub systems of the systems so to manage the system of systems you need to have a configuration management you need to configure the external assets the internal assets and uh, as we have seen every one is talking to each other and then there there has there has to be a decision support system there has to be a, a how a particular sub system will react and how it will feed the information to a superior system and that talking and uh, both uh, uh, on board and uh, external to the environment when external to the environment we talk of parking area the metro station the park the trains uh, the passenger display system passenger information system uh, your ticketing system your uh, file base so the whole lot of uh, things so coming to the asset management earlier on i when i was buying a locomotive or a metro train i need not bothered about i was not bothered about the software part of it or the digitalization part of it i simply bought the locomotive or a train based on its characteristics which were deliverable like speed and 
capacity of the train, the other issues. But today, the software which is built into it, the digitalization which is built into it, there is a fear that there is obsolescence. I I buy a system for my digital for my asset, and I find that uh, in a very short period of time it becomes obsolescent. And now uh, you have a very brand new, good looking, gleaming white, gleaming uh, rake, and it's a dead a dead body because the digital the digital system of inside the rake is not compatible with the uh, uh, digital world outside the rake, and somehow the digitalization on board has never interacted the i am talking of rolling stock it moves in a different way the, the engineers the companies the like you just heard of uh, our bosch system he he talked of everything other than the rolling stock while so 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 everybody concentrated you have secured your servers you have secured your passenger mode you have got face recognition system you have got uh, parking system unusual event monitors all these but the train which is carrying so many passengers nobody has given it thought that suppose if some, i have to simply if i want to hack a system i will simply make the uh, seize the brakes i will uh, fail the brakes of that brake sitting anywhere in the world so that type of system is absolutely a new threat and i hope i am thankful for the organizer so of this uh, summit uh, this conference that they thought of organizing this so that people start now looking to that areas correct correct lalit ji just uh, hold that thought i think bahut interesting point you brought up ki one is if the technology is obsolete second is the threats are need not be inside the station or even inside the city he can be sitting somewhere else and create havoc for any of our metro trains but i want to get uh, anil agarwal ji's view on it uh, so anil ji you just heard uh, lalit ji talk about all the how the things have evolved right right from the days when he would have procured his first wagon for calcutta metro till today where he is sitting here and he is talking about things which even 10 15 years ago were new to us uh, you know and today they are a reality so what is your uh, you know perspective on the evolution of smart rail especially metro rail and the the challenges that you faced uh, as part of indian railways as you went along this journey see uh, good morning to everybody i am anil kumar agrawal i hope i am also audible loud and clear okay okay you see uh, i have worked on indian railway mechanical department for 37 years before retiring in december 2019 so my experience is also <clears throat> has been very evaluating type in the starting when we started the career we have an absolutely total manual system even recording of schedule form filling everything we used to do mechanically there was a record room in our diesel shed where even when the loco used to come we used to take out the files and see what was the previous booking what is the current booking so all those things then uh, we further moved on to in a slightly miniature way of computerizing all our datas of course lot of work is still to be done in that direction particularly in railways every but lot of uh, improvements have taken place but after that uh, there are two three big new development which has happened which is I, i think already part of all metro system but i am just sharing my experiences here is like uh, our rds or research design organization they installed a bearing acoustic detector somewhere near lucknow to that's called the en route monitoring of a rolling stock so our locomotive when i am sitting in uh, posted in mumbai and ahmedabad locomotive passing through that area some uh, kind of report uh, uh, if the bearing is bad there will be some uh, information will be relayed to the depot and when we used to check those bearing on arrival of the locomotive in ahmedabad we used to find lot of correlation in that data which is being communicated by that machines and then which is uh, which we find is actually now all the technology of uh, en route monitoring we have already installed at more than 50 locations on indian railways then similarly hot box detectors then we did a uh, manufacture a smart coach about 3 uh, years back in the mcf about 100 numbers of smart coaches where we had to do lot of sensorization of the uh, coaches equipment like bearing air conditioners and uh, water even the water level all those datas are available in a centralized uh, center 
so all those things were we found it to be very useful so basically as far as uh, as galit ji says also uh, the the future lies only in uh, doing the proper digitization of complete assets and not only the uh, the particular asset but all the sub assembly of assets like various car manufacturers are doing and also we have to have the en route monitoring system onboard monitoring system they should talk to each other we should have a dedicated cloud uh, uh, system, cloud computing system so that we are able to pass the data very much in advance and now the since in the metro sector i find one of the biggest challenge of the metro sector is that we have to ensure the maximum availability during the peak hours time so and it's not only the rolling stock we are supposed to maintain the signaling we are supposed to maintain the automatic ticket collection systems then the electrical supply managements and uh, even the biggest uh, one of the biggest area is the fire protection system available in the stations and the trains so there are many sub systems in a metro area and i am sure metro is really doing a good job lot of uh, improvements they have done there are some rail, some metros with, who are doing it uh, as a core activity themselves directly there are many rail many metros which are now moving to non core activities like station management even civil engineering asset management they uh, probably giving to the outside and even this fire detection system outsiders are maintaining and the core area like rolling stock is normally nowadays train is given to the oem who's the manufacturer because he knows each and everything there are a lot of software involved in that they don't part with their uh, code also so best way is to have the oem driven maintenance for the rolling stocks and then uh, for the safety uh, biggest thing is the safety you know safety is when it comes it requires the uh, snt department particularly our signaling systems if there is any i think the biggest threat if we do not maintain that uh, snt system properly that is the biggest threats and that is a core area where uh, we should train our own staff and we should have the control of that maintenance with us so uh, in the i feel that uh, already lot of works are being done and that's the only way forward there are lot of uh, ai systems have come into the system like first ai system which we installed near jalandhar for checking the wagons so it used to take the picture of wagon then slowly it started detecting that this wagon body this picture means there is a defect then start sending us like so those type of developments are already happening on indian railway also but metro systems are far advanced in the this thing so the cloud uh, management which we metro railways are having that cyber security is very important otherwise that mr lalit ji said that anybody can sitting anywhere can do any create any problem and uh, i visited once the reliance metro which is running in mumbai so i found the maximum problem they were facing regarding the air conditioning not working properly so it's a very overcrowded all metros mm -hmm. so that is one area that air conditioning has to be completely sensorized we should have a totally uh, predictive maintenance systems available traditionally indian railway has only the schedule maintenance system no a trip schedule seven days daily schedule six month schedule like that but we didn't have any preventive maintenance uh, this predictive maintenance mechanism so we have also moved into lot of predictive maintenance systems and metro is already equipped with all those uh, uh, big assets other than that i feel uh, one area which is uh, really uh, important is uh, the depot the whatever depots they are creating you no know, for maintenance of the rolling stocks all those depots should have the state of art facilities so that your downtime is brought to the minimum because the biggest thing in metro is you have to have the maximum availability in the peak time correct so if your downtime increases because of non having uh, not a very good uh, facilities then that creates a problem no so i i agree with you anil ji because uh, recently we had an issue in the bypane hadi station in bangalore where one of the trains uh, stopped for yeah, whatever yeah. reason and uh, that gives you a power of metro 11000 people 
uh, suddenly started uh, came out of the trains and had to commute by their ways uh, but mypanali are... this uh, they doesn't have a metro the uh, system no they have uh, mypanali is one of the first Achha, okay the, uh, talking about metro rail okay uh, metro rail yeah and then uh, what also happened is one of our uh, technology parks uh, you know they have started they have given a provision to uh, start a monorail from there to the metro station Okay. so now you're seeing the thought process and that's where i i want to get in uh, praveen here to give us a sense now praveen uh, both lalit ji and anil have talked about technology quite a lot right and that i was expecting from ibm <laughs> to talk about technology but i think in india everybody is technology first but uh, can you give me a sense of what kind of efficiencies we need to bring because we clearly see a a, a fast growth fast adoption of metro but at mm-hmm. uh, end of the day you know if these are not being run profitably it's a it's actually a damages to the taxpayer and most of us on this call will be the direct facing the direct impact of it so what are you what are your thoughts on that and what are the things that you think have to be brought in to, right. to- yeah thanks dr venkateshwaran for asking this very important question see reengineering is an interesting subject whatever we can use to improve our learning from the past and the mistakes or maybe good things we did in past it's always good to bring the efficiency in the processes and we the three things play very important role in this process people process and technology of course with the learned people like yourself and all the uh, respected uh, panelist on this panel we have lots of experience in this field now we are not a novice country we have around 700 km running operation metros and lots of upcoming under construction processes so we have lots of experience and we can use those experienced people and processes india is known for their it and the uh, thinking power and computer we are all you know all the tech companies are led by indians nowadays that's a, of course a big proud moment for all of us so uh, similarly on those lines why don't we use the technologies available the latest technologies uh made by indians made for indians and developed customized for specifically for indian projects there are uh, processes which we have defined very well uh, right out, right out uh, plans and the processes to do the reengineering process technologies which i personally propagate is uh, virtual construction or we call it building information modeling bim so in this process what we do we create the same building two times or same facility same track same uh, route two times first virtually in computer and we find all the challenges right about alignment or space planning routing angles uh, traffic management crowd management you can do simulations virtually and we can find the uh, problem areas in in uh, in terms of traffic divergence or crowd management egress ingress in out plan in case of any emergency we can also do the uh, analysis about uh, structural damages in case of an earthquake or flood or fire or or a stampede or a terrorist activity so we can uh, reengineer the buildings and the facilities considering all those aspects of uh, future possibilities so yes bim is propagating that technology and it helps in creating the same building or same facility twice so during the virtual construction phase we can find lots of problem not only in the design process cost procurement uh, facility management running operation so all those problem can be identified and can be rectified during the actual construction phase on ground so reengineering has always been a very important subject which unfortunately in india we have been ignoring for quite long and believe me we have case study which can save up to 27% of the total cost and bring lots of 50% efficiency in the system by using this these technologies like bim other industry if you see in compare to us for example aviation banking automobile uh, all those have uh, completely overhauled their processes but our industry we call it design and construction or architect engineer and construction aec industry is little lagging behind in using those new technologies but i think next 25 years will change the way we design we operate and we manage and we use the buildings 
So re-engineering is the future, uh, as you said, Dr. Venkateshwaran. Excellent. Thank you, Praveen. I think uh, I was pretty uh, surprised uh, that up to 27% of the cost can be saved in a, such a capital extensive project. Metro is uh, not like, uh, you know, it's not uh, uh, OPEX friendly, it's CAPEX friendly and absorbing. And uh, when you say virtual buildings, and I'll come back to that, but I think somewhere you're also talking about you know, maybe looking at concepts like digital twins, maybe. But on yes. that note, let me just, uh, you know, uh, throw the question to uh, uh, take it further uh, to Krishnanand Rangaswamy. Uh, now, the the operative word here is technology, right? Everybody's thrown the ball in your court and, and Pankaj's court, which I was hoping that we discuss a lot about the business and the process. But uh, India, I think, is now tech driven. And uh, one of the beautiful things that uh, Praveen brought up, there's a lot of our Indian companies globally, or even global companies are being led by uh, people from India, or at least of Indian origin. So can, can you give me a sense of from a technology point of view, what are the changes that you're seeing and how can we you know, address some of the concerns that even Lalit ji and Anil ji brought up right at the beginning? Uh, including cyber, which seems to be a big concern, even in a forum like this. Definitely, Mr. Vipin. Thanks, thanks for this. So, uh, I mean, there are many cues Mr. Lalit and Anil Ji and Mr. Parveen gave on this. Let me give a holistic perspective why we need technology in today's asset management. So, uh, Mr. Anil Ji talked like uh, they have the bearing monitoring where they're going to analyze the condition of the bearing and then it is going to send a message to them. So this could be considered as a part of a condition monitoring techniques. Like bearing, they do it for oil analysis. There are many technologies available. Uh, if you look at the hierarchy of maintenance, uh, we talked about the calendar-based maintenance, where on a particular schedule you execute work, then it is a uh, uh, usage-based maintenance, and the level higher is a condition-based maintenance. So that is the best that we could do with the available technologies. Uh, that could be delivered. Again, uh, going a step further, when we have to get into the predictive models, prescriptive models, do we have the ammunition for it? Do we have the technology to build the predictive models? So uh, that is where the whole technology part comes in. And Mr. Raliji rightly pointed out, uh, never talk to the wagon maintenance, never talk to local maintenance. Yes, they don't talk. Same goes with the system. They have different OT systems, which is siloed. So same activities done by the different team have their own siloed OT systems. Now the IT systems, they typically run your uh, ERP processing applications and things like that. So one of the imperative for the technology is to bring in all this data. Now, when I talk about data, these data are not simple. Uh, uh, consider a condition monitoring train. Uh, so just to share my experience, like I worked with uh, Dubai Metro implementing the asset management system. I was with Qatar Metro and the party worked with uh, SMRT Singapore and LTA. And uh, uh, two years I was engaged with uh, Network Rail UK in building their intelligent infrastructure program. That is my background. Though I had in many industries, been rail, this is my experience in implementing system. So when we are uh, going for a predictive maintenance uh, uh, process, the first thing we want is there are TVs of data, TVs of data. Now, how are we going to manage the data? So uh, that is where the technology comes in picture. That is where we need a platform, a cloud platform, which is going to host uh, the thousands of TVs of data. Now I have TVs of data. Now, what am I going to do with this data? How am I going to in extract information from data? That is where our analytics engine comes in. The engine that is going to cut across this TBs of data from different sources and gives us information or knowledge that helps us in decision making. So uh, I'm sure like Pankaj is going to talk in detail about the AIML, but uh, when we talk predictive maintenance, it is a data. We are reaching a point of condition maintenance where the engineering assets could give us the uh, maintenance benefits. We could reduce, I mean, keep your uptime, uh, reduce the downtime. But if we go beyond this, it has to be data driven. Now, to manage this data, to utilize this data and take information, that is where the whole technology comes up. So that's a, at the higher level, this is what we need. We need a technology that is going to host the data, that is going to slice the data and give us an information. So I'll give an example now on our Singapore MRT. So uh, we all see that LO trains, the condition one trains running across the whole 
uh, whole uh, rail during the non operating hours in each trip it generates close to 20, 20 gb data and they run periodically now uh, uh, that we commissioned a project separately only to uh, run through the thousands of dbs of data and see whether we are going to have any meaningful information and what sort of information it is was there a consistent track uh, geometry alignment issues were there were there issues on the pantograph or the electrical overlay so these are the finer details that we want to see from that so this comes with uh, help of the technology the ai technology ml technology and my other thing is like uh, when we go going for a digital asset management having a digital platform is imperative so when my experience with the network right though they are not metro but the first thing we did was a, a establish a cloud platform a platform which is going to have uh, uh, all the data dumped into that and that is where we derived that and with this there is also the cyber security threat and now we have met lots of advancement in the cyber security arena now the other thing that i want to talk on technology is the mobility now any uh, solution on asset management mobility is the core uh, uh, mr uh, uh, anilji uh, talked about that so they used to have a lot of forms papers filled in and these papers are dumped in nothing from this paper goes into any intelligence now uh, today any uh, metro system or beta right system or infrastructure management every activity is done by the field worker in a mobility device so to have the thing delivered to the mobility device without this uh, right mobile technology it will not be adapted by the field workers we know field workers uh, may not be very literate in handling mobile but uh, this has been a very substantial uh, uh, movement towards it having the field force uh, uh, with the mobility option like uh, we work with the ibm and there are like visual inspection models whereby visually we inspect and tell whether there is a defect in it uh, this is run again uh, at the backdrop of the AML technology. So to sum it up, like, uh, and Mr. Pavin talked about the 3D models. Now uh, we are engaged with the Mumbai Metro Line 3. Now uh, the way we technology has gone is, now the whole data for that Metro, it comes from the BIM. We are not making any separate data. We are taking what Mr. Pavin talked about the 3D model. Now we have gone to 4D, 5D model. These models are taken directly and put it in their IBM Maximo CAM system. So that is where now technology has gone. Now the OEM user can have a virtual station, a virtual tunnel, and he could see all the assets there. He could measure the distances over there. He could plan all his activities without visiting the site. So uh, this is um, no, I'm short time. So this is where we go, and technology has enabled us in the asset management domain. Thank you, thank you. Uh, uh, that was very insightful, but. Ultimately, you put the ball in Pankaj's court, which is which is good. I know so, he's the next one. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Pankaj, uh, you know, first of all, uh, obviously, we understand IBM and what it brings to the table. You probably created a technology marketplace where there was none in the beginning. Uh, what I'd be interested to know, and I think what are the, a lot of the listeners would be interested to know, is one is uh, what Krishnanan brought up is about data. Without data, you can't have predictive, prescriptive, any kind of model. So do we have the right kind of data available to us to try some of these strategies? And then the other area is more around you know, using things like cognitive technologies for facial recognition, image recognition, and using some of that, you know, whether it's threat detection, somebody in a, sitting in a train or figuring out if their wagon is it, the coach is actually going to break down now. There's a threat perception because of an accident. So how far away are we from all those, uh, you know, wonderful things that technology can do? And what is practically the scenario in India? Sure, Dr. Vikram, and uh, thanks for this opportunity to the organizer. Actually, uh, at IBM, we are closely working with uh, most of the metro organizations in India, as well as globally. Uh, uh, and uh, I come from the Maxim Asset Management Technology Platform background. Uh, one thing you said, that's the data, right? Now, these systems, the enterprise systems are very data hungry, okay? If when we talk, and if, if you don't have the right data, quality data in the system, it's more of like garbage in and garbage out. You don't get anything out of it. Uh, how, who will put this data? It's enormous data. We are talking about the systems, the subsystems, and typically owned by the OEMs and EPC of the world at the first beginning place, okay, before the operator takes over and before 
the subsystems start uh, giving the operational data, right? First is about how do we define the right set of hierarchies? Because before we start talking about AI, ML, and uh, advanced technology, we have to have the fundamental rights. If we don't have the fundamentals at the right place, it's going to fall flat. While we can aim high, we won't achieve it. Okay, now to begin this journey, at one point where the asset management was not even a DPR item, um, means I, I'm sure most of uh, the panelists and the audience would agree that even the investment on an asset management was not even thought of. Uh, not so long, even at the time of maybe 20 years back when our first metro organization was coming on board and uh, the, the great success story. But now when we are seeing that the assets are getting aged, the workforce who are retiring, because the person who was there in the first place, he doesn't need any system. Everything is on top of his head with the sound of the engine, with the sound of the Excel and uh, damper, he can say what's going wrong about this, right? Now the new generation coming on board, they need this information. Now, how we have defined it? If we have defined the information at the bogey level, you can't do the analysis at the damper and Excel level. No way. I mean, it's impossible, I can just say. Now, coming back to the point of uh, AI ML, right? First and foremost thing to uh, have the right amount, right uh, strategy in place in terms of having the, the visibility of the systems, okay? Who can provide this information? The OEMs who have built the rolling stock and they are, pro they are ready to provide, provide it, we kind of uh, uh, held them accountable for this, right? The, there is no AI without a digital tweet. Now, I, I use this word very carefully, no AI without a digital twin. Now, many times when we talk about digital twin, it, it, we, our, we confine to our vision only like a 3D visualization. Digital twin is not just a 3D visualization, okay? It's just one part of it, right? We have to have our the process digitization, we have to have the entire asset digital, digitization, all kind of the uh, spares, parts, every single thing, uh, job plans, maintenance policies, standard operating procedures, safety plan, uh, you name it, right? Whatever going on for the last several decades on piece of paper or on top of someone's head got to be in the digitized form. And that's where I, we uh, provide an end-to-end -end solu solution to the industry to start their digitization journey right from the very basics. Uh, once they have the basics in place in terms of defining and variety of asset classes we are talking, we are talking about rolling stock, one of the most complex asset uh, going all the way to the uh, Excel wheel and damper label, right? And if you have not defined it right, it's, it's become a unmanageable complexity, right? Uh, over the period, SNT assets, AFC, and all of them have got very advanced sophistication on the OT side generating huge amount of data. We just heard 20 GB of data in just uh, one trip. How do we get that data and make it available for the analysis, for the anomaly detection, for the alarm and faults which are getting generated so that the, the depot is ready to process it before that uh, train reaches to the, the depot for uh, the maintenance, right? The job cart has to be ready. The, the entire planning has to be uh, in terms of spares, the tools, the, tech, the right uh, technicians, right? This information, we are making it available as part of our holistic viewpoint around the intelligent asset management, which begins with the process, which begins with the core asset management, bringing in all kinds of PMs, uh, all kinds of the workflows, and then enabling the condition monitoring, which includes integration with the OT system, all the metro subsystems. They are very, very advanced now. They are opening up their APIs, provided those are upfront uh, uh, agreed by the respective OEM, given the choice because uh, each one wants to monetize their own ways of the advancement, right? But think about a metro point of view. Uh, end of the day, they have to leave it with these uh, assets over the next several decades. Civil infrastructure, 70, 80 or 100 years of the design life, rolling stock, 30, 35 years of design life, right? The OEM may possibly be off the campus after some time, right? Having this system, a uh, consolidated system is kind of a mantra which has the capability for uh, uh, integration with all kinds of variety of metro subsystem and taking a complete control on it. And then from a technology point of view, we have, we as part of the our offering, we also offer the advanced statistical algorithms, the modeling capabilities, the predictive, which enables the predictive maintenance part uh, uh, as part of the same uh, offering. But 
to reach to that stage you got to have your first uh, few steps uh, uh, set up right in the right way of uh, uh, as part of we heard uh, krishna in the talking about the visual inspection it's also from the same technology platform uh, uh, where the uh, i mean most of these gangs typically called gang right who are doing the track inspection and uh, over stretch and uh, uh, they should be enabled to keen their inspection data their observations while they are on the job not that when they come back in office because if information the failure history and things are not captured at the right time it get lost almost half or maybe more okay uh, and it it lose the whole purpose of uh, uh, if you are put asking them to put on a piece of paper and then digitizing i think we are defeating the whole purpose of uh, uh, thing the the field workforce we will be reluctant to do this duplication of work right so the mobility comes uh, in consideration right where they can do the failure reporting they can keen the actual inspection data and that data can be analyzed in the real time or near real time so that uh, rather than taking uh, uh, the reactive actions we could be more proactive on it okay uh, a cognitive assistant this is another very important thing where i just don't go with my sops my uh, standard operating procedures written in the manual i want some information uh, uh maybe talking to my senior colleague who may be out in the field right the technician can collaborate they can actually uh, uh, make use of this augmented reality capabilities right ar capabilities for collaboration all these things we are doing right from the enabling the digital twin to ar to ml to predictive maintenance uh, all kind of capabilities we are offering to our customers but but very last important point i want to stress it it's a journey it's not that uh, you could be i mean getting to the predictive maintenance maybe i would say it's more of like uh, the final stage of uh, uh, nirvana stage if i put the use the word yes i want to uh, every single thing what's going to happen i want to know about it but it's a journey you can't do it until you have your basics uh, right right so uh, i maybe i i would like to add additional but uh, uh, just to summarize that's where we are uh, from a technology point of view thank you pankaj i think you summed it up pretty well because uh, you know one of the interesting things i've seen in digital transformation overall and in asset management is that there's no nirvana stage uh, you solve some problems and you will have newer ones because at the end of the day i think we are driven a lot by customer experience and we have to give the best experience there are people who will be leaving the private vehicle and coming in a metro for example and if uh, to krishnanand's point if ac is not working and that is your biggest issue i think that's not a great customer experience and uh, you know you will start seeing commuters complain about it and that becomes a priority as opposed to you know looking at predictive maintenance and all the other wonderful things which are important and if you have not defined that ac in your system at the very first place i mean you can keep dreaming it about it you can't fix that you can't be on top of the problem before it occurs correct so i want to take go back to krishnanand for one question so i had more questions for the panel but we have a lot of audience questions because of the interesting <laughs> turn this whole discussion has made so we'll try to take as many audience question as possible but then one question from the audience for you you know given um, you know all the things you said uh and i think before you uh, we had for the discussion on 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 the changes that are required especially to increase efficiency so what are the in your opinion what are the changes that we have to make uh what the operators have to make uh to in their it platform you know and what are the lessons we can learn from uh, other countries as well where you work for example what can we learn from qatar what can we learn from the emirates uh in in changes that we need to make in our current system because ac was i did not think of it in bangalore we don't use ac mostly but uh, you know india is a hot country and we do that can be a big issue okay uh, that's a very interesting question uh, vikram sir one thing is like uh, the initiatives i talked about there were like 6 uh, or 7 years back so mm -hmm. they knew the a uh, requirement for a digital platform like uh, even when i talk about uk when they established this uh, the basic thing is we need to understand that data is very important data is a way of life if we are going to improve things for asset management uh, we are gone beyond uh, engineering efficiency we have reached the point of saturation where engineering efficiency is not going to deliver much but uh, the whole organization has to accept the fact 
uh, data is going to be critical and we need to establish that's a, one more pillar like operation and maintenance and data should be one more pillar that acceptance should be there right from the top to bottom but off late in india like if you see the tenders now they are in line with western world like the expectation now i mean they are some of like the platform that we talk about they talk about this platform but not in detail and not in line with what is happening outside the world so investment in this uh, it, it's a very very uh, so critical thing but if you take on metros are doing it but other part of railway are they doing it i won't uh, much agree with that because it's a cultural change now you are not going to going to put your reliance beyond the people you trust it's going to be the data that you are going to trust it requires a cultural change it is going to take but somewhere we have to start the change thank you krishnanand anil ji and nalit ji because we have your you know wisdom uh, you have seen everything <laughs> indian railway had to offer and where we are today question for you this is also from the audience uh, so the question is very simple you talked a lot about uh, predictive maintenance and preventive maintenance both of you talked about it and uh, anil ji especially you talked about the later years how you know we started seeing cameras being introduced to look at damaged vehicles so where is this trajectory heading you know are we are we in a position to say yes we have systems in place so that pankaj can get more data to work on this or are we saying that we still like krishnan is saying we still haven't brought that culture uh and i want to draw an analogy from the automobile world right where i'm uh, you know watching that very closely and suddenly with the coming of the electric vehicles and it and the push that the government is giving towards electric vehicles the entire value system value chain of a ic industry has changed in automobiles right you wanted to make money of oil change and clutch repair and all that that is over now you can't make any money because this doesn't have a clutch it doesn't have a oil change it doesn't have anything so are we seeing a similar pattern in uh, railway especially in context of metro and uh, if yes then when can we have that data that pankaj is so desiring now to make those changes may i respond may i respond please 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 both both See, of I you i tell you the I railway is such a the... railway is a very huge system as such in the indian very assets are very large in numbers like uh, though we are moving in that direction but the pace may not be so good like i give you one example like we have got 3 lakhs approximately 3 lakhs of wagon freight wagons so the to know that when we install a system on the en route monitoring we are supposed to know capture the wagon number also that in which wagon this problem has been detected by this particular system so that a correct message can be passed on to the maintenance depot now to monitor to capture that wagon number we need to have rfid readers and then rfid tags on every wagon this project is going on for last uh, say 10 years we have we have still not been able to complete it because for the simple reason the uh, number of assets is huge so the railway is allocating huge amount of money in you now adopting this modern technology in every budget and things are progressing but uh, i would definitely say it is not at the pace in which as it has progressed in metro or it means it has progressed in the automobile and but i see a time span of say next uh, 10 years to 15 years by the time we should be in a really very competitive position from that point of view okay thank you anil ji dalit ji your perspective Uh, there are, I like to add two, th- two, three things. First of all, uh, there need there is need for a quick response team. The mm-hmm. earlier system of the the time available for reacting to any trouble now is very less. And uh, as Krishna Zanji was saying that the capture of data. So now companies like Webtech, they are giving us uh, trackside equipment like hot box detectors, flat wheel detector. and they have the signature analysis of a moving vehicle so and it is possible uh, in fact we have a ram lot system that remote location diagnostic system a person sitting in the control and command center he knows the health of a uh, train he know, he can react with the driver of the train in fact now the data is so in fact a few days back we had a trial run of a, a driverless train mm-hmm. 
this was possible only because of the availability of data but still because i my, most of the railway system metro systems in the country are officered by uh, our ex colleagues so when i talk to them their main concern is the construction of the building procurement of the uh, rolling stock uh, setting up of a depot maintenance depot platform etc what people what politicians or the people of the day they want but when it comes to mr krishnanandan's part of these systems talking to is the mr pankaj jain's part that the solutions which he is providing the merits of the as i said systems of the systems sos system of system the configuration management when the whole holistic view of the things somebody is looking at face recognition somebody is looking at uh, uh, rolling stock somebody third person is looking at the some rolling security integrated security systems but uh, i cannot have multiple command center like in like uh, when my, myself and mr anil were in the beginning of our career in our control system there used to be carriage and wagon wing there was a civil engineering wing there was a electrical engineering wing there was a remote uh, oh overhead equipment where, where also now and earlier there was no need for these people to talk to each other in fact uh, as a senior divisional engineer when i would get a phone in the night that track fracture rail fracture has taken place so i would say that my civil engineer brother will go there why should i break my head or if a signal has failed so my so now the thing is that in fact you must have known in indian railways have taken a decision we used to have eight different disciplines in railways indian railway service of mechanical engineers indian railway service of electrical engineers indian railway service of uh, stores now there is only one indian railway management system so, uh, the, the irms indian railway management service because now where the banya caste ends and the brahmin starts where this punjabi ends so those <laughs> boundary walls have blurred so you are engineer you are a metro engineer you have to bloody well know rolling stock also platform also and for that lot of reskilling of the staff is required which i think we are not still uh, training our staff because manpower the human resource is the most important thing you may get technology from ibm you may get technology from uh, experts like krishnanandan but unless your people at the wheel people who are running the show if they are convergent with this so i would give and life cycle costing lcc because you cannot uh, uh, earlier we knew that if i purchase this uh, rig it will last for 30 years today it is not it may become obsolete because not of the hardware because of the software issues and other data issues so lcc system and as uh, jain uh, rightly pointed out that if you insist the rolling stock people will give you that uh, like, but there is the top management should know that he cannot work any longer in silos the and as krishnanandan says the days of the new generation depending on somebody is feeling the vibration of the damper somebody is uh, uh, like our good old hammer man finding the loose wheel and all that those are gone the thing has to be database data has to be captured it's a high velocity high volume high variety data and it has to be a quality data as so unless all these things are managed we will not be able to achieve what we what people expect from us thank, thank you lal i think you nailed it i mean i could have closed in it but you gave me an idea and i'm going to have some fun uh, so sorry pankaj and krishnan uh, first pankaj on the spot pankaj one example of a project in india metro where at least 20 30% of what lalit ji is saying is happening <laughs> so a uh, couple of uh, metro i can closely i uh, mean uh, i don't want to name there but i worked with uh, two metros organization okay and one of them is now managed by the operator uh, some of the metros are actually managing at the, uh, the ondm phase right one of the important point is the capex part which runs into the huge huge number right a uh, uh, four digit five five digit crores and other big number right when it comes to the opex part uh, because these systems won't one place you can have it in one or other way uh, but then to keep it uh, up and running there is a of course an opex part right and i think somewhere because these were not identified as a proper dpr items uh, m- m- most of the organizations are covering these expenses through their snt budget or in maybe others okay what happens that uh, and they will end up having only up to limiting their uh, requirement to the frecast reporting okay i have my frecast report generating in the by the system and i'm happy with it 
losing out the entire uh, things around the visual inspections to the the this AR AR enabled co uh, collaboration and other parts of the the technology advancement which is uh, being promised and available. It's not just a promise; it's available at disposal. Mobile enabled enabled technicians, right, where they can do this their work, fill out the things uh, uh, available, right. Uh, now that's not the because being a metro uh, community very close knit sharing knowledge by each other they don't really compete to each other rather uh, and that's a big good part about this industry right new metros who are coming up uh, in western part of the world uh, they starting right from the beam uh, to have the digitized uh, 3d beams and uh, a very clear strategy to integrate with this uh, metro subsystems See, it's not that th there's a lack of advancement on technology. It's, it's of course, we are uh, maybe on top of the technological advancement, but it's about taking a holistic view and realizing that just onboarding is not sufficient. We have to sustain it for, for a over a period of time, right? When these assets get aged, maybe they may not give a, an, any warning this time or any trouble this time, but down the line, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, when you have to take a decision, should you repair it or should you replace it? How would you take it, right? That's the time, uh, and to get to that answer at that time, you have to be ready at this stage. You can't delay it that, okay, when I do my COD, then I need an asset management system. You are losing out because your OEMs will be gone, your EPC will be gone. Who is going to put the data in your system? If you expect your people to fill it, I mean, you can keep dreaming it. They, it won't happen. And if you don't have the right data, uh, the, the OT data coming in, uh, I mean, analytics won't work. The insight can be cannot be generated, right? So uh, certainly, I think those points are being uh, observed by the community, by the uh, by the industry, uh, especially in the, the new RFPs that we are seeing, uh, they are addressing. But again, uh, a, a holistic view is still missing around the asset management. I would still put up as, as a last point. I mean, get me a system, but for whom, for what, for uh, for what's my five-year vision, five, what's my 10-year ten, vision with this asset management platform? First, first and foremost, even asset management platform need is still uh, deliberated. It's not yet conf uh, agreed across the board that, yes, we need it. One or other way, if uh, uh, the, the Armstrong or uh, uh, HRC or, or maybe the B B BML of the world, CRC of the world, if they're giving it, I'm fine. But what they're giving? Uh, uh, as part of the compliance. So there are many questions, I think, uh, as, a, as an industry, we need to acknowledge and technology is available because good part being in India is many of the things are already working across the world. So we are not really going to reinvent, we are going to just reuse them here for our uh, benefit. Very, so, very good point, Pankaj. And Pankaj, I like, I love your statement, keep dreaming. <laughs> you have said that three, four times. Krishnan, very quickly, last words from you. Uh, one project globally and you have to name it now pankaj took the easy way out he didn't want to pit one metro against the other but globally one of the best metros which are interconnected system of systems talking to each other good data collection if you have to name one example what would it be uh hong kong metro is doing good so i wouldn't directly work i read many cases uh they're pretty much good in that oh excellent a lot of things but look at their kpis is tremendous and they started the journey decade back. Now, we are now talking about metros of recent edition in our transportation segment. And now our metros are coming out. But how good are we going to, again, rightly pointed out, Baranjat, is this a system, a compliance a part of a contract? Or do I have a vision to drive it forward? So we, like all metros are coming up with the right system. Now, what is the vision of the system? How are we going to drive it? That determines. But when we talk about few metros, the Hong Kong metros, uh, they are like operational for uh, more than a decade and they're running it very successfully uh, with their vision. Perfect, perfect. So thank you all for your time today. I think it was, a, at, at least I learned a lot. I think we've come a long way, a lot more to be done. Uh, I think uh, Anilji and Naliji, thank you for your insights. You took us through our journey and what we understand is that though we started somewhere else, we have made long strides even within Indian Railways, which has really helped Metro. You know, if you, without Railway, there'll be no Metro. Uh, and Indian Railway has done tremendous service to the nation, strategic asset for the country. Uh, and uh, from Praveen, uh, uh, very impressive point on visualization, 3D, 4D, looking at, you know, digital minus one, 
for maybe reducing cost and understanding all the loopholes. Uh, Krishnan, and thank you for pointing out Hong Kong Metro. I think that is something I would read upon. I would have never thought of it unless you told me. I would have looked at Singapore maybe, but uh, Hong Kong is a good insight. I was not aware of it. And thank you for bringing up all the important points, especially around data. And uh, conveniently, I think everybody dropped the bull in Pankaj's quote. And Pankaj, thank you for all the heavy lifting because you talked about data. You talked about the challenges. And uh, I think one of the key points you made, which is practically as a technologist, I also see that challenge, is who's going to enter the data. If your systems are not ready and you expect your people to fill in the data, that's not going to happen. You can keep dreaming. And uh, I wish you had named a metro that we can study as a good example, but you sidestepped the issue. <laughs> but uh, we want to again thank you for the work, especially what IBM and IBM Maximum have been doing to asset management in the smart metro projects. I see a lot of work heavy lifting being done by IBM on the data side. Uh, I would also like to thank, thank our moderators and also the organizers for looking at this topic, which is such a fascinating topic and needs more attention. And hopefully we will do another session uh, going a step deeper with, with the panel of experts we have. I think we should, we should do at least a two hour session or a full event on this topic. So thank you very much, all of you for your time and uh, back to the moderator. Thanks, everybody. It was really, really fantastic. And uh, we all enjoyed the session. Thank you so much.